Last time, Jesse gave us a bit of an update on some of the progress he's been making with the engine bay. And Daryl unboxed some goodies that we received from one of our suppliers. One of these goodies was the correct dashboard for our Grant tank. It's had a bit of a hard life and it needs a little bit of work, but it's nothing Daryl can't handle. Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour and welcome to Workshop Wednesday. The original dashboard we acquired is for a single radial engine Grant. Our model would have had two diesel engines and consequently a slightly different dashboard. One of our suppliers managed to source one for us, but it needs a little bit of work to bring it up to scratch. What we have here is a tail of two dashes. This is the uh, one that we had originally, but this is for just a single aircraft engine grant. And I fitted this into the tank, getting it ready, and I made a new bracket for it. We're gonna go with the most original one, which is this one. As you can see, no magneto. What I'm assuming is two tacos and a speedo. We want to replace some of the original gauges if they'll fit in here. We're going to put new gauges in where we want for oil temperature, things like that, because uh, we're going to be running the engine, so we want to make sure it's, it's, we know what's going on with it. So Ryan will be doing that, our mechanic. Basically, I'm going to try and strip out the stuff we don't want, and then I'll do just a little bit of panel beat and see how we go. We're not going to use any of this wiring, anything like that. So I'll have a go at just, you know, just these have all just been hacked off when it was pulled apart from the original tank. Luckily, this sort of thing is right up Daryl's alley. He has to strip everything down, panel beat the bends and twists, wire wheel the rust and old paint off, repaint everything, and fit the new gauges and switches. Sure we can't use any of that. <laughs> no, no, I don't think we're using any of that. I'll just get the nips now and cut off the bits I can't, the still connected. Yeah, anybody want a uh, 50 year old rat's nest? Have we got a treat for you? <laughs> it seems like a little bit of a shame that such an interesting piece of equipment has been allowed to degrade to the point that it has become unusable. But 70 or 80 years ago, when these vehicles were being used as farm equipment, it was all about practicality. If it wasn't useful, it had to go. On the bright side, it has been really interesting to watch the restoration process. I love thinking about when these parts were first assembled and how the factory workers at the time would have had no idea where their hard work might end up. The fact that it's here on YouTube for tens of thousands of people to watch and enjoy is, in a way, quite a comforting thought. Need to take this little brass fitting off. You gotta love brass, it doesn't seize up and rust as much. I need to get right in there, so I might try and get rid of this uh, fitting here. That way I can get to the head of the bolt that's in under here to take off this this additional bit on the side. Little tiny brass nut on that. So just trying to get in there. It started to move. That's out. That's a, lot, a little red globe light in there. You can see it. Little red one. Little red one, yeah. We have that loose, but we can't see how it comes apart. Damage it too much. So. What switch is it? Do you know I, what it's for? I, no, I honestly don't know what it's for, but it's not. It's part of the original dash, so I don't, I'll try another way of getting to this. We'll, we'll leave the original switch there and I'll just struggle. It's okay, I don't mind.
go. That's broken, so what we'll do is we'll repair that. It's got to look a bit more like that one. So it's got a bit of damage. We'll just add a bit on there and repair it. And it's, it's got a rubber mounting, whether for insulation or just for vibration. Yeah. yeah. So that, again, that rubber looks in good nick. Yeah, rubber's in good nick. Yeah, yeah. And once again, brass fittings look like that. Bits and pieces. They're not globes. They, they had a little light fitted behind them. Yeah. So just when the light was on, it just shone through, nice bright and red. The only gauge that was in here. I think Ryan's got some gauges and I think he, he measured them and said they're going to fit in the holes. So oh yeah. That'd, that'd be great. We'll get one in a minute and, and have a look. Got no idea what it was. It's had a little, uh, a few markings on there. Oh, it's a little. All right. That's got rid of most of the bits and pieces. I think we'll be right to panel beat some of that. I might just take some of these off the back. These we won't use there. They've had it. What are they? Oh, they're just grommets. Yeah. It's where it's been bent. Try and straighten them out because I think the steel is bent around them. It's not going to want to let us play with it. about as good as we're going to get it and we want it to look like it's 80 years old we don't want a brand new it's going to be quarter inch UNF. one of the biggest things we've had to do is get our head around imperial sizes while working on this everything's different it's all sixes and sevens <laughs> yeah that's it there's a cover that goes on the base here we'll do the same we'll, i'm going to make a little flat cover that goes on here so we've got six studs they would have been held on probably with a wing nut so I'm just checking the threads because I'll have to clean the threads off. Yep. So I'll just run a die nut down on them, tidy them up and uh, make the cover. So I'm basically going through just cleaning all the rust and, and rubbish out of these threads. So what do you die nut is used for sharpening an existing thread. It's run over the threads that might have been damaged or blunted over time to correct them to their original condition. With the threads cleared up, Daz moves on to the cover plate. That's our shape we want, so what I'll do now is I'll just round off the edges, just take off any sharp edges. Okay. Let's got rid of all the sharp edges. So I've just got a position mark where these bolt holes are. And then uh, should be right.
see if this fits. You wouldn't let me check to see if it fitted beforehand. I have a bit now. There we go. Cover plate, check. Now to clean off the old rust and paint with the wire wheel. So, do you see anything interesting on the um, on the dash panel, Daryl? Funny you should mention that. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever sat in this, I think every time they sat in it, they put a coat of paint on the dash. And as I was wire wheeling it, all these great details come up, like a start, emergency stop, defroster, wiper. Wait, defroster? What's that? <laughs> I don't know. To, to my knowledge, they didn't have a glass screen in them, but they obviously must have had a fitted glass screen that they could actually put in and out so they could drive during the winter months. Uh, there's a few more details over here. Low oil pressure warning light, left and right. Uh, and over here, on and off switch. Yeah, so, got a little data plate here, it's pretty hard to read. But, uh, about blackout switches and that. But this, this is your light switch. So, Where'd you put that bracket there? So what I'll do is I'll sit that on like that and that'll give me the whole centre for the other one. Gonna fix this up. Well, I'm just gonna. I'll probably end up making another base like this and cutting that off and joining it to it. it looks like it's been oxy cut or something through there. See that the... Yeah, it w doesn't look like it's been ripped off, hey. No, looks like someone's actually a gas axed it, it off. Yeah. yeah. Believe it or not, that's the whole center there. That's it. Sure. Out where I'm going to cut it, position it on there, and then I can mark where I want to cut that. Daryl tidied up this edge off camera and made a nice V shape to maximise the surface area for the weld. Pretty good. Uh, just got to have a little bit of a gap between them. Look at it. That doesn't look too bad. <laughs> Nailed it. Hey, not bad, Daryl. It's pretty good. Should do the job. Is it Daryl? Like I bought one. <laughs> <laughs> After a few licks of paint, it's ready for assembly. Oop. There we go, that's our on-off switch. On the switches that we get nowadays are different sizes and that, so 
just better, better off making a new hole. Better off leaving the original holes in case we ever come across stuff we can use. And that's just a, uh, a blanking plate. If we ever had to swap that out, we could, no problem. We've got a little uh, fuse box we're going to throw in as well. That one looks in better, Nick, than the other one. Yeah, well, this is, this is a bit better, this one. Ryan's knocked this up. I was just going to fit it, so I'll do that now. Actually, get it out of the way. What we've got here is a little battery isolator. Once again, I've just fitted to a blanking plate. We're going to use existing holes. So this is just to, so when we finish driving the tank, we turn the battery off so no one can actually jump in. We had long <laughs> did we have to. Mate, you never know. They all want to have a go around here. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Oh, this is just a uh, little light to tell us when the engine's on. Engine running light. So I'm just going to fit it in here. Just go in there. It's pretty important that we know what's going on with it. So we're going to use him just because we've got it. We've got a couple of the original lights that we took out of here. The little, they're not actually lights, they're just the light that reflected the light would have gone in behind them. But we're not going to throw them away, we're just going to pop them back in here. This fills up a few more holes in the dash. Everybody that ever sat in this tank put a coat of paint on this dash, I can tell you. Yeah. It was thick paint. <laughs> Love the guy that sold stamps. Everything's stamped. Every American part has a stamp or a number on it. That's about it. Time to pass it over to Ryan for wiring up fitting the last few gauges and mounting it in front of the driver's seat. That's all we have time for today. Join us next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour and I'll see you on the next one.